What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got a new how-to. This one, probably really helpful to a lot of UE36 owners. In, in one of the previous videos, we actually installed a electric fan, you know, with the upgraded electric fan for the front. But this time we're going to be removing the clutch fan altogether and this is an entire clutch fan delete kit from FCP Euro. Everything in this kit is included except for this piece here, which is the um, coolant level sensor. So my coolant level sensor is finicky. It's not working properly, so I decided just to order it. Um, it's, it's like $13, very cheap. Um, but this kit here is available basically entirely in a set right here, just like this from FCP Euro. You get the, the wrench, which is important. Uh, you get a metal impeller water pump, which is really important uh, because the stock ones are plastic and known to fail, just like every other plastic component. Um, cool and temperate, cool and temperature sensor, um, and it's probably a good time to replace it anyways, considering my car is uh, at like 180,000 kilometers. Um, you get a washer for the temperature sensor. You get a new thermostat, which is super important. So um, the thermostat inside. They get sticky, you know, it happens over time. Every car's thermostat fails. Uh, so the E36 is no exception. And last but not least, thermostat housing, which on the factory one, I'll show you once I move everything out of the way, is plastic, so we're gonna be upgrading it. This one is a metal housing. Um, really important for E36s because, again, plastic components, they tend to crack, right? So this is an aluminum housing, uh, much better quality, much better fit. So, and it comes with the gaskets, which is really important. So let me move everything out of the way. Let's get to it. Well, first things first, let's remove the air box because we need to access down here. Uh, the air box removed fairly simply, just two clips, one there, one there, and then these two bolts, and then the air box comes out. So let me just get that out of the way. It's easier to take the whole thing out as one piece. So let's get that out of the way. There's a tab here and one on the other side just behind the washer bottle. You just gotta pull the tab as any other plastic tab and then pull out the, uh, the insert. Give me some space, push down the hose, that's about it. Um, we're going to disconnect the upper rad hose because we need to get this thermostat um, housing out from in here anyways. So crimp style connectors, we're not going to be using these anymore. Um, we're going to obviously use these hose clamps, the ones that are typical hose clamps, the ones with proper screw head, they're reusable, much easier to get to. All right, so let's disconnect this. Uh, you obviously need a bucket underneath your car to grab, to catch all the coolant because it's just going to leak up. You know, you can't stop that. Put a decent sized bucket or uh, a, drain a drain bottle or something like that to catch all the coolant because gonna make a mess okay so and there comes the coolant okay so very important to make sure you have something in there to catch all this coolant because it's gonna make a mess even with the bucket come on anyways Another screw over here or another clamp just right there. Okay, those out of the way. Obviously the clamps fell into the bucket, but we'll get those later. We need to also disconnect this hose to get a really small screw head in there kind of break it. Okay. All right, that was a mission. Thank you. Okay, next thing you need to do is actually remove uh, the clamps from these, from this hose, because it goes through the actual um, fan shroud. Uh, down here, you'll see it goes in. Um, you do need to remove, I guess, these two, so one there and one there. I think they're like almost like reusable zip ties, so you can just jam a fly head in there and zip it out. Okay, so I because the kit only comes with one wrench, 
Um, you do need something to wedge, uh, to hold the water pump from rotating. So there's four bolts on the water pump, which you can actually kind of jam a flathead, like this long flathead, uh, in between. So you can get some leverage and um, essentially just the thread. And again, you're doing opposite thread, so it's right to loosen. All right, after some struggle, I think we broke it. Oh, thank God. All right. Now your fan's not gonna come out because... Oh, actually you can, look at that. Wow. Spoke too soon. Well, I was gonna actually take out the thermostat housing holes on the other side, but it looks like the fan shroud is basically ready to come out because the fan's out of the way. Uh, we just I just rested that up there for now, but you can sort of lift up and slide this forward and up. Be careful again. That hose that we just disconnected the clamps from on the right side. Uh, um, when you lift this up, you're obviously going to force a lot more coolant to come through than I expected. Uh, that hose is connected to the other side. Uh, it runs through the shroud as we talked about earlier, so just be careful, don't yank this out this side. So down here, you have a temperature, or sorry, level sensor. You do need to remove this. Uh, so just undo this connector for now, and then we'll change it out after. Alright, so that's out. Just another old clamp, we just gotta loosen it up and remove it. Duty to uh, basically feed the pipe through the shroud so you can get the whole shroud out. But loosen this hose clamp here. We go this pipe off. Okay, next thing. This is the new housing, as you can see. We gotta replace the metal one. The old one is plastic. I don't trust it. The thermostat's right under there. So just a couple bolts, we'll get that out. One there, one right there, and then two on top. Okay. One thing I have to mention, always have to mention, don't you just love it when you put buckets under your car to catch what you're, whatever you're trying to catch, like in this case, all the coolant. And a lot of it still ends up in on, on the floor, you know? Maybe they should redesign these buckets. Get yourself a half inch um, to do the top right. And I think um, all the other ones are smaller. Bang, it's a 10. <sighs> and a couple of love taps just around the seal. Gasket, obviously. Just take off the old gasket. That's cool. There you go. This is the old gasket. Looks like someone's replaced it. And looks like someone's replaced my thermostat too. Well, after fighting with my thermostat, because it was so stuck in there, I actually had to break it completely. So there's a chunk of it. Be careful if you're breaking your thermostat because well, I'm going to clean that up and then prep it for the new thermostat housing the thermostat the housing and the gaskets to go let me do that now. next step is actually to remove um, the tensioner because well we need to loosen the tensioner in order to get the belt off the water pump itself so the tensioner is just down here if you remove that cap with a flathead screwdriver there's a torx bit in there i think it's like t35 i'll check on that um, but once you remove this cap you stick a T35 in there, lift up, and you'll loosen the belt. There we go. This cap needs to come off the tensioner itself. Uh, tensioner looks like it's been replaced on this car. It looks brand new, so that's a good sign. Uh, the belt is also a Pontiac belt. 
very happy to see that. I don't need to worry about it. Reuse the same belt. There you go, that's the bit. My torch bits aren't labeled, unfortunately. So, anyhow, you know what I mean. BMW, German cars, torch bits. That's enough. As long as you can get the belt off the water pump itself. So there's the new one. And let me zoom focus on this instead. Um, looks like the pulleys, there's four bolts in a rectangle. And then we've got four bolts holding it on. So we need to get the pulley off first and then worry about getting the rest of it off. They're 10 mils. They are. So. Let's break all of them loose. There we go. So, the main thing is, I am not hitting obviously where the, the bell goes. I just gave it a few taps right here and it came right off. So, looks like the original, it's stamped BMW, which is fine, I don't think this is, it's a metal uh, pulley, so we have nothing to worry about here. Uh, if you see any damages, obviously inspect it. These are fairly cheap, you can replace them, and it's so easy to do, because it's already off. But, uh, yeah, so we've got four bolts, one, two, three, four, um, holding the water pump on. I believe they're also 10 mils, so let's get to it. So, there's a trick to getting this water pump off if it sees like mine is. You can't pull it off, it's pretty difficult. Uh, obviously try and wiggle it, you know, if it'll break, great. If it doesn't, no problem. What you can do is take one of the screws that we used um, for the pulley off the water pump. And what you'll see is there's actually that screw and the one at the bottom, right in between it, there's one hole right there. If you thread this in to that hole, it'll actually push against the block and release the water pump. So what we're gonna do is obviously thread it in by hand first. And there's one, for, there's another one on the other side between the two holes. So you can sort of back them out evenly. Do right side, left side, right side, left side. Right. Just alternate. Don't go all the way threaded in on this one and then do the other side. Uh, you know, go a little bit with this one, then a little bit that one. So you can sort of back it off, you know, as one piece rather than backing it off on an angle. Um, probably your safest bet. sides as always what I'm doing is just taking the flathead and wedging it in between um, exactly where the school hole was because I know there's no worry about damaging anything there so let's work it off little by little stands only in the front so the car is actually leading back so I actually saved some cooling in there but at the end of the day make sure you have a good bucket I can't stress that enough it's a 
mess with a, a proper bucket. We want to make sure we clean the mating surface again, as we did with the thermostat, um, because we want a good seal. So just make sure you clean exactly where the seal goes for your new water pump. Uh, as you can see, there is a rubber gasket right there, so make sure you clean that area on the inside very nicely and thoroughly. Okay, time to put the new one in. Uh, I know for a fact that I'm going to struggle because this rubber seal that's uh, on the new one is obviously much thicker than the old one. So, and it, there's such a it's such a weird angle to put a water pump in uh, to put any leverage or like put any pressure. The other thing is, it only goes in one way, so be happy. Um, the bolts on both sides are not obviously equal length, or sorry, I said they're not equally spaced. So, it's only going one way, and that's a good thing. Okay, so here my audio got cut off, um, but all I'm doing is really just installing the water pump back in and putting the pulley on, and basically just getting the belt ready to be reinstalled. Sorry, sorry about that guys, I, I accidentally didn't turn on the microphone for my camera, so I missed out just a little bit, but I didn't go too far. After you put your water pump back in, um, you know, thread in, the bolt by hand as much as you can and then you know don't uh, bolt or don't uh, tighten down one bolt all the way and then start the next you have to do a little by little so there's four bolts you know do cross uh, like wide it down just a little bit on one corner then go to the bottom right then go top top right then go bottom left so you know alternate as and slowly seat it in square rather than going in like this you want to just go as square as possible just so that the water pump seats straight because the metal metal impeller only has so much space inside the block to spin and you don't want that to keep it you don't want it to hit the block um, the only thing I've done is that and started to put my pulley back in obviously all I did uh, before I did that I just cleaned up uh, all the coolant you know um, took off the serpentine belt and basically wiped it down make sure all the coolant was off okay fast forward just a little bit here we have pulley back in and the belts back on straight as same thing as taking it off just you know put the torque spit on the tensioner push down create the belt back in fairly straightforward you gotta put your new thermostat in now be careful on thermostats there's usually You'll see a little up arrow or a tab or something which will tell you which way the thermostat is supposed to be facing so the my up arrow is right there i'm going to make sure that's facing up and then this rubber gasket just basically goes in front of it like that okay and get ready with your thermostat housing make sure the thermostat housing gasket's on your water pump gasket is on and then just like that there's a little bit of a this bolt at the top right, you kind of need to feed this behind the little hook there. Um, simple enough, put your bolts back in. Just remember that the top right bolt is the only one that is not a 10 mil. Okay, the next step is to actually change the temperature switch out. It's just on the left side of your rad. One thing I will mention is before you go ahead and place the order, make sure you check what type of temperature switch plug you have on your car. So FCP Euro has both types of plugs. So here is one that's like an oval shape and then there's one that's round. So make sure you check your plug uh, and confirm what style it is before you place the order. It's a very simple, straightforward swap. You just need to disconnect the plug off of it. So you just squeeze down and it pulls right out just like that, set that aside. And then I don't have an open-ended wrench that big, but my obviously my adjustable wrench is. So I'm gonna think it's about seven eighths in size, but it's pretty big. So I'm just gonna use my adjustable and loosen that up, forward, and then you can sort of spin it out by hand just like that. Now grab your new one. Um, and make sure you have your copper gasket, proper crush washer, just right there. Uh, this what triggers your fan to turn on actually. Copper washer just goes directly on the fan switch, which you thread in by hand. It is copper, do not 
run this in with any electrical equipment first. So, and then simply just give it a quick hand tight. Do not over tighten this. This will probably break. So, a little. I think half a turn, if anything, should be more than enough. There we go. Feel this tight. And then just plug in. It might be a little bit tighter than the old one, but put that in until you hear it click. That's it. Okay, the next step in our kit install is to plug your hoses back on. Um, so this is the one that runs from the bottom of the rad down there, uh, up here on the right side to your thermostat housing. So it's the bendy one. So make sure your clamp is loose, feed that down, make sure you slip it on way as much as you can until it sort of seats against this plastic piece right there. And rotate your clamp so you can get access to your screw just about there, that's perfect. Actually before you tighten down the one down there you need to make sure that this is slipped on up here so we, we, we ensure that we don't have any problems. I purchased these from Canadian Tire. I'm assuming if you're watching this in the States you probably go to AutoZone or something. Um, don't have a Canadian tire there. Um, so you just basically slip that on before you obviously slip your holes onto the there's the housing. So next take your hose that is coming from the right side of the engine block through the fan shroud. If you're keeping your fan shroud you need to do this again. If you're not um, you can essentially just run it to the reservoir and you're okay. But in my case, I'm not deleting my fan shroud because I have to keep it for the reservoir. Um, you need to buy a reservoir mount otherwise. So I'm keeping it and just running the hose that we took off earlier on this side. Uh, plugging it back in. The only thing you need to make sure on this side is that your uh, the clamp, the screw head, is actually not on the not on the back side. It's on the front side. So underside in this case of the fan shroud because you need to be able to access it from down here um, in the event you need to disconnect this hose you don't need, you don't need to take off this fan shroud again okay so at this point all I'm doing is really just resetting my fan shroud uh, just making sure these pipes are all tucked in where they need to be just like that uh, so they're out of the way and obviously making sure that hose at the bottom is exactly where it also needs to be um, I did need to purchase another hose clamp for this side um, because the one I have on here again is the non-replaceable one so I'll just get that but uh, you know, once that's in place just like that and hooked up here I can sort of make sure that the underside is also exactly where it needs to be a little hooks down here where the fan shroud sits in you'll see them when you're working on yours just making sure that it's actually locked in place just like that so simple as that now uh, you can make sure that the other side hose of the thermostat is actually thermostat housing to the upper rad hose right there the upper rad hose i think that's what it's called so now you can actually make sure that that hose is also connected to your thermostat housing on this side and the the upper exit on the rad up there on that side and we're buttoned up for this part Make sure you put in the tabs, um, the tab on this side and one just behind the little holes at the top because otherwise your fan trap will keep moving and the reservoir will keep moving as well. Um, we don't want that so make sure these tabs are locking the fan trout to the rack. Um, and I think that sums it all up. Um, you need to obviously bleed your cooling system. It is important uh, to bleed it a few times on E36s. Uh, I think it's three times at least I would suggest you bleed it so fill this up uh, open up the cap screw let the car get warm you know let this bleed out uh, and make sure your reservoir is still at the max line there's a max line on the other side of the bottle um, we've drained a lot of coolant out of this car so I'm gonna assume it's gonna probably take about a liter of coolant back maybe a little bit more uh, because it will fill up the rad and the block again um, 
So, good thing. I think that sums up this entire video. Um, in the next video, I might actually just move my electric fan to the inside, um, just because I think that's where it's more useful. On this side, it is more usable as a secondary fan, but now that we have deleted the clutch fan, we should use this as our primary fan, which belongs in there. I think that will sum up the cooling system. Uh, I've basically replaced almost everything in terms of cooling on this car. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments or just send me a private message. I'll be happy to help. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry this was a little bit of a longer video. It's a pretty extensive DIY in this case. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed and it was very helpful for you guys. Thank you again. Thank you.